Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So back on the training pitch today, me and Omar are gonna get a session in. So a lot of these drills are gonna add some kind of cognitive element to it, along with a physical aspect and a technical aspect as well. Because not only do you need to be technically sharp, obviously you need to be able to handle the ball. You also need to be fit to be able to handle the demands of 90 minutes on the pitch, but you also need to be very mentally sharp as well, because there's a lot of different decisions that you have to make in the flow of a game. I've been reading a lot about this recently, especially teams over in Germany and Europe. The coaches over there do a lot of brain games with their players, because they know that the sharper they can be mentally, it's just gonna complement their technique, complement their fitness, and they're gonna be an all-round much better player. But enough talk, me and Omar are gonna get into our training session now. So as always, we're gonna start with a warm-up. So let's go. So as you guys know, we always start with our 10 minute warm up, just jogging back and forth across the 18 yard box, getting some different movements, dynamic stretches, just preparing our body to start working. This is so important. Even if you're starting your session quite light, it's always good to get a warm up just to activate those muscle fibers. It's really gonna help you improve your performance through your training session and avoid injury. So then we moved into our first technical warm up. And as you'll notice, we're actually using a tennis ball instead of a football to start with. So the reason we're doing this is because you have to focus a lot harder on a tennis ball than you do with a football. Because the football is a lot larger, it doesn't take quite as much concentration for you to return the ball. So if you have to focus on an even smaller object, your brain is basically working overtime so that when you come back to work with the football once again, it's still in that hyper concentration phase so that it becomes even easier to control a football. So we're just challenging ourselves even more mentally here, working on some basic drills, but just adding that element of extra focus. So working between the hurdles here, just quite light to start with because this is still part of our warm up, but just making it even more difficult. So then we added some different movements in and incorporated the football as well. So by this time, the football feels absolutely massive by now. You guys should give this one a go. Even if you just start with juggling the tennis ball, then juggling a football, you'll notice a huge difference in your control after working with that smaller object. So I would really recommend this if you're looking to improve your first touch, to improve your juggling, anything like that. So then we moved into some more resistance band work with the same drill, but we're working on one leg at a time. So with all of these, you'll notice I'm pausing at the end. So as I hop over that final hurdle, I'm actually pausing. So really working on the stability of the knee and the ankle. This is really good injury prevention kind of work. And you're just stabilizing those muscles around the ankle and the knee. So they're even more stable when turning, when twisting and you're gonna be at far less risk of injury. So really good work on explosive movements as well. Then we took the band off and did the exact same thing and this time added a technical portion to it as well. So this time taking it on the thigh and returning it with the inside of the foot. So it's also working on some balance as well. So this is gonna be a real game changer. If you can improve your balance, your stability, you're gonna feel a lot more stable on the pitch and your movements are gonna be far more efficient and powerful. You'll just see an overall improvement in your game. So I would recommend doing some stability work, working on one leg at a time. Then I just worked on some simple juggling with the tennis ball to begin with. So all I'm doing is just alternating feet and I'm just going left to right, trying to get a nice clean touch on that tennis ball. Again, having to focus really hard. Juggling a tennis ball is about 10 times more difficult than juggling a football. Give this one a go for yourself. It really will improve your juggling if you practice this one because you have to focus on that smaller surface area. So even if you can only do two to three to begin with, just keep practicing it, trying to get it right on the top of the foot on that flat surface just to pop it up and then you'll master it in time. So I do about 100 juggles in total. So if you want to skip ahead, I believe this entire clip was about a minute long. So if you're looking to skip ahead, if you don't want to watch me complete the full 100, I completely understand if you want to get right into the next drill. But I think 100 is a very good target. I used to begin with 30, then I worked up to 50. And now I like to challenge myself to do about 100. Then we moved into another first touch activity, this time incorporating other areas of the body with the tennis ball. So we worked on the inside of both feet alternating, then went to the laces of both feet, then we went to the thigh to the inside of the foot of both, thigh to the laces of both feet. We did the same thing with the chest, chest to the inside of the foot, and then we went chest to the laces, and then we finished with a header. 
And then as soon as we were done with that, we swapped to the football and we realized how much easier it is to control that football after we've been working with that tennis ball. So I would again recommend giving this one a go. It's a lot more challenging than it seems at first, but after you practice it a while, you'll be able to do it with the tennis ball. Then when you come back to the football, it's gonna literally feel like a walk in the park. Then we worked on some ball mastery, so just using some basic exercises from day one of Maestro, my ball mastery training program. It's a seven day program, I'll put it on the screen right now if you wanna check that out. But we incorporated the tennis ball, but this time we're catching it, throwing it back and forth. So it's forcing us to keep our head up when doing the ball mastery exercises. Too often when I see younger players doing ball mastery or dribbling, their head is looking at the floor. You need to be seeing what's going on around you. So just doing this basic ball mastery exercises allows you to get touches on the ball, get a good feel for it so you know where it is and keep your head up. This is really gonna be a game changer when you're dribbling, when you're manipulating that ball. If you can keep full control of it while seeing what's going on with your surroundings. Then we moved into a pretty challenging juggling exercise. So what we're doing is we juggle the ball in the square, then your partner calls out a color and you have to hit the tennis ball off the top of the cone of that corresponding color and then get the ball back from the air after you've just kicked it up. So working on some touch, bit of reactions. It's a very challenging one indeed, lots of things going on. I'll let the next one play out so you can see what's going on. So believe me, that one's a lot more difficult than it looks. Give that one a go for sure. Then we moved into a very simple dribbling activity. So all we're doing is dribbling and weaving through the cones using this foot pattern. So two touches with the outside of the foot, stepping over the ball and then repeating with the other foot. But what we're doing this time is we're having to keep our head up throughout the entire drill as our partner holds up colors of cones. And then you have to shout out the color back to him. So I'll let this one play out so you can hear. So as I said before, so important to keep your head up while dribbling. So you can see if there's teammates that are open that you can pass to, that there's spaces behind the defender, lots of things that you need to recognize. So then we took it one step further, this time doing the same footwork pattern, but this time we have to catch and return the tennis ball. So even more challenging now because you have to not only think about the ball at your feet and keep control of it, but you have to have your head up to see the tennis ball coming and the coordination to catch it and return it to your partner. This one is very difficult indeed, but it's really gonna force you to keep that head up. It's gonna work on your visual awareness while keeping control of the ball. You're gonna be a far better player if you can see your surroundings while actually manipulating the ball around the pitch. Then we just worked on a very simple passing and receiving exercise for a couple of minutes just to sharpen up our touch and work on minimizing the time between when we first touch and when we distribute the ball. So as you can see, I'm receiving the ball every single time with my back foot and then continuing to pass the ball with my near foot. So instead of taking two touches with the same foot, really trying to be efficient and quick between the touch and the pass. So working on that angle, so this is really good for wingers if you receive the ball on the wing and you've got maybe a striker making a diagonal run and you're playing it down the line quickly. So just getting that touch set and then immediately passing with the inside of the other foot. So very simple technical work, but it's good to sharpen yourself up. And this is a touch that you will incorporate during a match situation pretty often. So the goal is to minimize the time between the second you control it and when you distribute it. Then finally, we worked on more of a reaction first touch drill and also incorporating some shooting in there as well. So I'm at the top of the box, as you can see, there's two cones on the ground, a green and the blue. Omar is feeding in the passes to me and as the ball is on its way, he's calling out one of the colors and I've just got to take my first touch in that direction. So if he calls out green, I've got to open up my body and then take my touch across my body. And then if he says blue, I'm taking the touch back across goal and finishing. Although that last touch there, as you can see, didn't get it out of my feet enough. And that's very important. You need to get the touch out of your feet as well. 
So this is where the mental sharpness really comes into play. If you don't process the information quick enough, your first touch is gonna be hesitant. So you really wanna try and respond, be aware of the command and adjust your body accordingly. So this is a great drill. If you can set yourself quickly during a match, if you can process information, so having your head on a swivel, recognizing where the defenders are, you can know where to take the first touch. And this can be the difference between scoring a goal. Even if your shooting technique is really good, if your reactions aren't there and your first touch is in there sometimes you'll miss the opportunity to shoot so make sure you're working on your basics all the time trying to incorporate some visual awareness to it and some reactions so you have to process information even though it's not as fun as just kicking a ball into a net i know a lot of players love to just go out and do that this stuff is what is going to take your game to the next level All right guys, really good session in there today. We've got a lot of work in, both physically and technically, because we've got some continuous reps, so working on that fitness, hundreds of touches, so working on that technique, and also a cognitive element included in each of those drills, so we're sharpening up mentally as well, because you can be the most physical player on the pitch, you could be the fittest player, you could be the most technical, but if you're not aware of your surroundings and you don't have a good reading of the game, you're just gonna limit yourself as a player. Me and Omar are gonna get another session in this week, so we'll have some fresh content for you next week as well, so you have plenty more drills to be working on but that's going to be it for today's video if you did enjoy it make sure you smash that like button hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos and i will see you guys in my next video